Hi there. Finally, out for another wild camp. Tried to get out a couple of times, September, October, but something's got in the way and I've not managed to get out. But I'm out now and the freedom of the hills is only an hour's walk away. It's late October, right at the end, uh, just before we put the clocks back. Uh, so it's going to be dark, uh, probably six, half past six, something like that. But it's very mild, really mild, but cloudy, so the views aren't fantastic. Anyway, I'm walking up Ringinlow Road. It's um, a long straight road out of Sheffield, about two miles long. Probably used to be the main coaching road to, the, to Anchester in the 1800s. At the top, there's uh, Ringinlow Village, and there's a nice pub there, Norfolk Arms. That was the, the old coaching inn where they'd stop and change horses before heading over to Manchester. Can't stop there because uh, I've only got about three hours and I've got to get set up and get my tea cooked and that. So I'll be, I'll stop in um, the village, show you the pub, and then I'll be heading up onto the hills. So I'll talk to you in, right, in a bit. Right, just uh, arrived at the village of Ringinlow. That's uh, Norfolk Arms pub. Uh, it's a very nice pub, uh, only two or three miles out from Sheffield. Um, seems a pity to walk past it. It's got about six handful beers. Um, yeah, but this is a camping trip. So I'm gonna head on up Ringing Low Road and uh, make our way towards the campsite. Right, uh, not far to go now. Um, only about another half a mile. Another reason for, for going on this camp was to basically bring all my winter gear with me and just give it a good test out, make sure I've got everything and uh, there's nothing uh, I've forgotten that. Uh, I have thoughts of bringing a tent and then putting the wrong poles in or something like that. Anyway, it'll prove all my gear's good. Straight away, coming up Ringing Low Road, I found out the remote microphone which I use with like a muffler on, on my single lens reflex, uh, that's not working. I must have spent half an hour trying a couple of leads, changed the batteries, and uh, I couldn't get it to work at all. So I'm having to record this on my mobile phone at the moment, which isn't bad if I can find a sheltered spot. But uh, if, you, if it's windy, I can't get rid of that and it just ruins the audio. So uh, I'll see how I go. I'll either try and film it on my mobile or I'll, once I've got my tent up, I can mess around with my uh, single lens reflex, see if I can get the uh, remote microphone working. But um, there must be a moral there, I think. Yeah, check all your gear before you, before you set off. Anyway, head up here um, and I'll uh, make a start and get my tent pitched and that. Speak to you in a bit. Right, that's got my tent all set up. Um, way I've positioned it, got the wind behind me, so I'm pretty sheltered here. Um, I put a windshield around, I might not actually need it. Managed to get my microphone working. Um, the new batteries, which I bought this morning, I took out 
and I put an old battery in, uh, an old Duracell, and that worked. So I'm not sure what's up with it. Um, it could be rubbish B&Q batteries or just uh, something else. Anyway, so the microphone's working. So, um, see what's on the menu tonight. Obviously, it's a camp. Uh, are you going to have camp food? No way. No way. I've got like a Mediterranean Mediterranean theme to tonight's meal. Um, for a starter, we've got Scottish mussels in uh, garlic and butter. Uh, with a French stick, so that's my starter. Uh, I'm using this for the main course. Uh, right, this is basically a risotto. I dehydrated uh, risotto, I cooked risotto rice, which takes about 30 minutes, then dehydrated it uh, and put in dehydrated mushrooms, peas. I think I've got a paella mix, I've put that in as well, and then vacuum packed it. So that should produce enough um, risotto to fill this pan. And for the protein, we've got smoked salmon. So that's going to be a smoked salmon risotto. So that will be the, the main course. Like I said, it was Mediterranean, uh, just haven't got the weather. And for... Uh, the sweet, um, it's just a nice piece of uh, Belgian cheesecake. Um, I only wanted one piece, but I, I had to buy two. There was, so I'm going to have to eat both of them. And uh, some double cream to pour on that. And a little bit to go in my coffee afterwards. So uh, that, that should certainly make a nice meal. So what I'll do... I'll get the stove going and then I'll, I'll get set up to, to make a start cooking the mussels. Right, they're just coming to the boil now. You can see it frothing up. So I'll just turn the heat down a bit. And put that lid on. And uh, it's just a matter of simmering those for, he said about five minutes. And hopefully that, that will cook them through. Mmm, they smell nice, so I'm going to get on and uh, enjoy these mussels. It tastes very nice. Not normal camp food, I dare say. Right, very nice, those mussels. So, for this uh, main course... I've got this um, risotto rice mix. So I'm basically going to soak that in water initially. I might have got too much here. We'll have to see what it um, cooks like. So I'm just going to add water to that and leave it to soak a bit. It's a bit of guesswork how much to put in. Now, where have I put the... Right, similar to all dehydrated food, you don't want to have any oil in it. So normally, when I cook this um, risotto rice, I would, I'd cover the risotto rice in oil in a pan and then add water. And it takes about half an hour to cook. So when I did this, I didn't put any olive oil in. So I'm going to put the olive oil in now. It sort of thickens it up and it's all sort of uh, generates heat in your body at the end of the day. So that's some olive oil gone in. Now I'm hoping in about five or ten minutes this will uh, rehydrate to its original um, 
estate. Right, it's just starting to simmer now. And uh, I can feel that the rice and everything is starting to rehydrate and it's getting a bit thicker. These are mushrooms. There's what are frozen peas in. Sort of the brownie tinge and colour. That's a, a paella mix that I found in one of the supermarkets. So I, I just dropped that in. I have tried the rice at home. It, it normally takes about half an hour risotto rice to cook. Well, once I dehydrated it and then cooked it again, it only took about 10 minutes. So it certainly did speed things up. Well, that's had about <clears throat> that's had about ten minutes now, and it's uh, it's looking like it's rehydrated. Yeah, yeah, that feels soft now. So I'm just going to add this uh, smoked salmon. I know at home we tend to cut it up into pieces, but I ain't really got that facility. So I'm just going to dump it in and see how it goes. So hopefully that will break up. It might have been better to cut it, but we tend to cut it up with scissors. Oh, it's breaking up as I, as I cook it. I think it'll just start to shred and that. Well, it looks a bit of a dog's dinner, but it tastes nice. Uh, the salmon's cooked through now or warmed through. So there we have it, uh, smoked salmon risotto. Mmm, <gasps> yow, very hot, but it certainly tastes nice. You can taste the salmon. Right, I've uh, just finished off the risotto. All my pans nicely washed. Um, see, actually, I'm starting to lose the light. It's nearly six o'clock. We're end of October nearly. We haven't altered the clocks yet, but um, it is starting to go the light. So I thought I'd better get on and finish me uh, my meal. Um, like I say, uh, I thought I'd finish off with a bit of cheesecake. I was going to get a tiramisu, but they'd only got a big one and thought it might be a bit greedy. It was for six. So I've ended up with a cheesecake. But I've ended up with two pieces, so I'm going to have to eat them. Oh, it's broke. Oh, dear me. Anyway, put that bit in there. So that's my cheesecake and uh, some double cream. Mmm. Well, that's really nice. I'm not sure about eating both pieces though. But it's, uh, it's really great to be out while camping again. Seems ages um, since I was last out. I think it could have been six or eight weeks, something like that. I think it was the uh, beginning of September. But uh, time just flies by. I know in September, a couple of lads I used to work with, they retired from the old Yorkshire Electricity, so... That were a couple of retirement dues where we, we went up to York for the day and went round uh, all the pubs. 
Yeah, I can't believe it, but in York Town Centre, there's a hundred pubs. I got a map, and uh, it showed a hundred pubs. Uh, so we didn't manage all of them, but we got around quite a few. Then, uh, also in September, we had our annual fishing trip. trip. Again, this was with the lads I used to work with. We'd, uh, we'd done this trip for about, it might be over 25 years. When we first started out, we used to go down to Bridge North and we'd fish from dawn till dusk for Barble on the River Severn and then probably get to the pub and have a couple of pints at the uh, end of the, the evening. Where it's changed a bit now, we, we still go on the fishing trip, we still camp, uh, even on a campsite in Newark where there's fishing lakes. But the difference is now nobody takes any fishing tackle. We've, uh, we sort of, there's some lads going it and never even held a fishing rod in the lad, in the lives, but it's still classed as a fishing trip. Uh, we tell our wives we're going on the fishing trip, um, but no, we don't take fishing tackle and we we have a good chat and a good drink uh, around Newark. Um, that's two to three nights away, that, so again, that was another trip, so I can't be out too much, so it's uh, got to the end of October before really I've uh, been able to go out for another wild camp. Um, I was going to get out early October, but my car packed up then. 97,000 on the clock. I thought it would have lasted a bit longer, but the high-pressure diesel pump went, and it, were, it would have cost more to repair the car than it was worth. So one week I had a car, the next week it was worth about £50 in scrap. So I'm, I'm busily, I'm stripping it, down complete getting all the parts off it and i'm gonna put it on ebay see if i can make a bit out of the parts but uh i don't know i've managed to sort another car out now but it, it all takes time so another week went and another week went so i suddenly thought right end of october must try and get out and i've managed it and like i say it's great to be out it's uh beautiful up here you're on your own um, fantastic views, try your gear out, I'm all ready for winter now and uh, hopefully I'll, I'll get a bit out, a bit more out when uh, uh, we get into November, December, January, February time, I'm looking forward hopefully for a bit of snow this year. Anyway, so uh, what I'm going to do now um, before I go to sleep, I might pop outside Try my camera out, see what pictures I can get uh, looking over Sheffield. Uh, usually get some impressive uh, views from up here, but I think it's a bit cloudy, a bit misty. Uh, there's no real moon tonight, but uh, might get a few shots of all the, the street lamps. Uh, I'm going to have a look at that. So I'll talk to you in a bit then. See you for now. Right, I've just been out, uh, managed to get a few... Uh, Shots of the, the city at night, um, while, while I'm filming this, I just look straight out at uh, the city, uh, about five miles away. Uh, thousands of street lights all uh, twinkling away. Anyway, I thought I'd have uh, a warm drink before I, I try and go to sleep, um, so I'm just boiling some water up, uh, have a cup of coffee and... Uh, I think I've got a 4G signal up here, so I might have a look at my phone for a bit and then uh, see, if, see if I can get off to sleep. Um, not too cold, so it's not a bad night at all. Anyway, looks like that's about ready to boil, so I'll get myself a drink.
Right, not a bad night's sleep. Uh, like I say, great to be out again. Only person up here. Saw a couple of people run past uh, late last night. I could see the headlamps approaching. I wondered what it was at first. But uh, no, really good. Really good it is up here. Anyway, um, basically just having a spot of breakfast and then I'll uh, be getting everything packed up. The wind's picked up a little bit. It's not too bad. Um, but uh, yeah, it should be okay for dropping the tent. So I'll finish this and then uh, get everything packed up then. Right, back on me mobile phone again. Um, not trusting me SLR and the, the microphone at the moment. Cutting through this quarry, uh, there's no wind down here, so I've no uh, noise or anything like that, wind noise. Anyway, another very enjoyable camp. Um, great to be back out again. Uh, won't leave it so long next time. At least it's given me a chance, brought up a few problems like my camera and a couple of other items I think I can uh, do with. So uh, I've got a chance to sort them out and um, look forward to winter then. Might get some snow this year, you never know. That will uh, certainly give me uh, some uh, really, really interesting camps. Got a couple of places to go. Still want to camp on the the highest point in Derbyshire, which would be the top of Kinder Scout. Like I said, I went up uh, previous and it was all wet and boggy and it, it didn't look a, a nice place to camp. But if we get some snow down, um, locate it via grid reference and yeah, it, it should, be a, should be a good camp up there in the snow. Anyway, I'm going to make my way back now, dry my gear out. Uh, Make sure everything's uh, ready for winter, really. So, uh, all I can say is uh, thanks for watching. Uh, hope you've enjoyed it, and uh, I look forward to seeing you on the next one. See you then.